The FX3 and the FX30 are part of Sony's cinema line and have been go-to cameras for creative filmmakers. And we're excited to announce a housing that will let them take their creative vision 200 feet below the surface. Assembly of this housing couldn't be simpler, so let's just dive right into it. So I've chosen the FX30. Let's go ahead and get it put in the housing. So what I'm gonna do is take the housing, I'm gonna put it face down, and I'm going to release the lock and lift the lever for all three of the back latches. So go ahead and lift those up off the hooks of the back. Take your back, put it to the side. You'll have a camera mount inside. We'll go ahead and remove that. You'll notice there's a quarter 20 bolt. I'm going to take that, line it up with the quarter 20 hole of my camera. And I'm going to use a flat headed screwdriver to tighten that down. Now go ahead and make sure this is nice and snug. You don't want any movement in this piece because any movement will translate to any misalignment in the controls. So once that's nice and snug on there, take your controls, make sure they're oriented out of the way, and nothing's gonna interfere during sliding this camera in. Take the camera mount, you'll notice that it came out of the base, slide it in place, realign your back lever, take your attention to your back, one of the benefits of the back is it is fully clear. Um, this O-ring follows an outside perimeter at all times, so it doesn't take any inside curves. Uh, it's very easy to maintain. There's actually no friction to overcome in this O-ring, so you don't need any lubricant. All you need to do is make sure that this O-ring is clean uh, and there's no debris on it or the ceiling surface of your front. Align the back onto the front. Take your lid snaps. Place them over the hooks of the back, and then simultaneously push down on both the left and the right, and you'll hear them click into place. Do the same thing for the top, and then as you do that, you'll see this compressed O-ring, and it gives you a nice visual confirmation that the whole back is sealed. Take the time to make sure that your lid snap's locked in place so that they don't open accidentally. And that's as easy as putting the camera inside of the housing. Take the housing and we're going to remove the port cover. Keep this with your parts. And before we take the body cap off the camera, I like to go ahead and pre-assemble the port solution for this. Here I have the 50 millimeter, and I like to use the compact dome port for general underwater photography. It's smaller, it's compact, it really gets into smaller places, it's easier to maneuver in the water and makes you very streamlined as you swim around. I'm gonna make sure that the three thumb screws are backed out so that they don't protrude into the inside diameter of both the port as well as the extension. I'm gonna take a little bit of Eichlite lube on my fingertips, like so, and I'm gonna run it around the O-ring and this lets me feel for any debris that might be there while applying lubricant to that O-ring. It doesn't take much lubricant, you're just trying to overcome the friction. This does not create the seal. And then I'm gonna turn my attention to the port itself and check the sealing surface. Also for debris, you'll notice on the extension that where it's lasered at the top, there's gonna be a thumb screw there. And if you look at your port, there's gonna be a thumb screw that corresponds to one of the shades. Take that, align it at the top so that the thumb screws correspond to the pockets in the extension, and then simply press the two pieces together. Now they're sealed. Take the thumb screws and simply tighten them down, and that keeps it retained. The sealing occurred when the two pieces got pressed together. These just keep the parts from coming apart. I'm going to take that, set it to the side, turn our attention to the housing. We're going to remove the body cap. We're going to take the gear sleeve and put it down into the port opening. We have another video on this where you can get closer looks, but check that out up here. And then what you're going to do is take the retainer, put it down over the gear sleeve, take the retainer tool, and then snug that down. It doesn't have to be over tightened. That keeps the gear sleeve from falling out. Take your lens, remove the back cap, 
Remove it. Front cap. Line up the tabs with the dot, dot on the camera. Orient one of the cutouts in the gear sleeve with that dot. Drop it down into place. And you're gonna feel it bayonet onto the camera. Click into place. Rotate your gear sleeve using the knob on the side of the housing and confirm that your lens is actually zooming. Take a little bit of iClate lube on your fingertips and just like you did on the port extension, run that around the O-ring feeling for any debris while applying lubricant. Take your port and extension assembly Again, noting that one of these thumb screws corresponds to the shade on the top. That's going to be at the top of your housing. Those thumb screws will correspond to the pockets in the port base. Align it, simply press it on, and then tighten the thumb screws. Now the port is attached, and this is a waterproof system. I'm gonna take it a step further because I like to add extensions to both levers. I also like to add a right handle. So first I'm gonna add the extensions. I'm gonna take the included hex key and I'm gonna loosen both set screws in each lever. Remove the lever. Same thing for the shutter button. Now, if you want a more in-depth video on how to do this, check out the link here. It'll also be in the description below. Once you have both levers removed, we're gonna add two extensions. So take your extension, place it on the control. Use that same hex key to tighten it down. You're gonna wanna make sure this is snug, but no need to over tighten this. Take your lever, and because this has a shape to it, you have orientation choices. So depending on your preference, you can angle your lever to be more comfortable for your particular shooting application. For me personally, I like to do something like this. So I go over and tighten, again, both set screws, one opposite the other. Nice and snug, but no need to over tighten. And we'll do the same thing for the back lever. I like to orient the back lever so that I can use both my thumb and finger to squeeze while that right handle is attached. So that would look something like this. If you find it a little difficult to get to the set screws, this can always be done prior to putting the camera in. But once you do this, you shouldn't have to keep doing it over and over. I generally will do this at the end of the trip just to make things a little bit more compact when traveling back home. But if you have a Pelican case, oftentimes this doesn't need to be taken off after you've done it the first time. Now all I have to do is add the right handle. Take the right handle, the two screws, and the larger Allen key that was included with your housing. You're gonna take the screws up through the tray and up into the extension. I like to get it started and then do the second one. And then go back and tighten up both of them. And these accessories make it just a little bit more comfortable. It lets you add two strobe arms if you want to, two lighting arms. Um, it also is nice because you can hand it up to somebody on the boat very easily by just handing them the other handle. Um, and at that point, you have a fully waterproof system here for the FX30 or the FX3 and you're ready to go diving. Now this is optional, but one last thing that I like to do is I like to add a vacuum pump to the system. I like to create a vacuum inside of the housing. Now this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to create a negative pressure differential inside the housing and that's going to let you check for leaks. Let's say you forgot an O-ring or something isn't maintained or there's a compromise in a seal, you'll notice that because it just won't hold a vacuum. The other thing is it does it will do is 
it creates that differential. So all of those pieces are basically going to be sucked together. The back is going to be pulled toward the front. Uh, the port is going to be pulled towards the front. So if you find yourself in rough waters or surf, for example, you know that all of these pieces are basically being pulled together, which is a very nice feeling if you're in rough water. So to do that, simply push the button that releases the plug, take the vacuum pump barbed insert, place it into the valve, you'll hear it click. At this point, all you have to do is pump the hand pump. So as you evacuate the air inside the housing, it's what's creating the vacuum or the pressure differential. Uh, I like to go for about 10 on the gauge, but the most important part is, is that the needle doesn't move. Once you get it to 10, if you notice it's dropping slowly, that means you should reevaluate because you have a compromise somewhere. Uh, generally speaking, it's nice to give yourself at least 15 minutes, take the vacuum barb out of the valve, let it sit for 15 minutes, check it again, to make sure that it's fine. If I have the time, I will do this the night before, and then the next day, right before I go out into the water, I can hook my pump back up, watch that needle jump right back to the 10 where I pumped it before, and you know that it held a vacuum overnight and that it is good to go. So anytime you take the bar back out, always make sure that you put the plug back in. I do use a little bit of the Eichlite lube on those two O-rings of the plug. It just makes it easier to go in and out over the period of a week of diving. It's just a good maintenance step. Take that and put it into place. You'll hear it click. Again, generally speaking, I make it a rule. If the cap comes out, the barb goes in. If the barb goes in, the cap. You're never leaving the valve open. And that's it. Simple as that. You're ready to go diving. If you have any questions about the FX30, the FX3, or the housing application, please feel free to shoot us an email to eyeclight at eyeclight.com or drop us a comment down below.